raw status. Much respect to Jackson State University football coach Deion Sanders, Hall of Fame, former NFL player, Hall of Famer Deion Sanders. Had the boys out there, the football team out there, handing out water to those people affected with the water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi. And this is something at Raw Status that we like to salute when we see people doing positive things in the world of sports. Just the whole presence of Deion Sanders down there at that small HBCU says a lot. And I came across some things in sports this week that I want to touch on. In sports, meaning regarding Deion Sanders. Now, always one of my favorite guys. Love the high step. Loved the swag, loved the style, never gave in, never let himself be pushed around by the mainstream media. Remember at his Hall of Fame induction, he put the bandana on his head like that too. Remember they made him take it off saying that it was gang related, the Atlanta Falcons at that time in the 1990s. Yes, the parasites have always been on the NFL, NFL players and the NFL athlete. Why? Because of the power that can be wielded. If the sleeping giant is ever awakened. And these days when you see guys like Sanders or Eddie George coaching at HBCUs. You have to say a lot of these black athletes are headed in the right direction. Now the media is not being honest these days. They speak so highly of Deion Sanders. They act like they didn't hate, hate, hate the man when he played. You even had some people, I believe, Boomer Sison, I might be wrong, that said they wish that he pulled a hamstring when he was high-stepping. Or was it Bradshaw? I can't really remember. So Skip and Shannon pops up in my mention. I click the story in regards to Dion and his, again, his great activities down there with the team handing out water to those affected by the water contamination in Jackson, Mississippi. And they say, you know, maybe he'll get an opportunity because of him coaching at JSU. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. You know, it's funny how the mainstream media never really stops. They always kind of keep going with this whole coded white supremacy thing. No matter how subtle, no matter how insignificant, no matter how petty, Seems like they always want to take a jab. An opportunity. Now, Deion Sanders may have his eyes set on the NFL. This may be a stepping stone for him. But on the other hand, when you look at the way that he is putting his all into this position, you have to recognize that the opportunity is at JSU. The opportunity is to build a small HBCU into a possible powerhouse already exhibiting his ability to steal recruits from other schools to convince them that JSU is a, be is a better way to go. Hit that thumbs up. So you see how they kind of slick and in, in very slickly in a slick sly way try to belittle what's going on when it's Black people colluding and networking with other black people. Hit that thumbs up. The truth of the matter is they are scared. They're fearful. Of big names like Eddie George or Deion Sanders coming to smaller schools because that could tip the scales. They're like, no, hurry up, get him out of there. Is, quote, taking another opportunity? As Shannon Sharp was saying and Skip Bayless were saying. It's a lot going on on that show too with those two. I'm going to touch on that in a later video. But think about it. Why do we think that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence when there's often dog dookie in the grass on the other side of the fence? How about if more of these recruits start coming to HBCUs? If more of these top coaches, what would happen to the balance of money and revenue as far as television, as far as Ticket sales, stadiums, bigger stadiums being built, more money being put into the school, sponsorships, Nike, Adidas, etc. I understand that some of these have to do with the NCAA overall, but things are changing with the rules and compensation. 
So who knows where Dion wants to go? Maybe Dion wants to play in the NFL. Maybe Dion wants to start his own NFL. That's really what needs to happen. Ownership from former black athletes and or black entrepreneurs, investors, taking control of this professional sports thing. Because again, when they start to use shows like Skip Bayless and get their puppets like Shannon Sharp to push their message, there's no sense into a powerhouse, as they say, like University of Miami, Ohio State, Alabama, Florida State, Florida, Notre Dame, Duke. We can go on and on. Michigan, Wisconsin, UCLA, USC, Texas A&M, Texas, Texas Tech. So no wonder they want to talk about their side as if it's an opportunity, quote. Because they understand that by giving you an opportunity, it gives them the, the opportunity to stop you from competing with them and overtaking them. So come, sign this Nike contract. Play with us. Don't do your own thing. And for that matter, would it even take the athletes to say start a four team league and expand from there? Or could it be done by the fans? When you look at the success of a guy like Deion Sanders, how can that be built upon by those of us around now and the generations to come? Shouldn't those that play the game the best own and control raw status?